right. Hello, everyone. How's everybody doing today? I'm Jerry Langwall, coming to you from Homeless House Estate and Gardens, and I'm super excited to be with you today and ready to do some cooking. One thing I'm really excited about is this is by far from what we get from the comments from you guys, our most requested recipe since we started doing these cooking demonstrations, and that's gumbo. Uh, but I've been waiting for an opportunity to do this because here in Louisiana, we literally have something called a gumbo weather, and that's whenever the weather first starts to get cool, when we get that first cool day in fall where the temperature drops to the 40s or so, and that everybody is posting pictures on their Facebook of their gumbo. Um, so I thought I wasn't going to do a gumbo during the summer. I wanted to wait till we had that gumbo weather. Well, we made it, guys. Here we are, and we're ready to get started. Now, look, I want to go ahead. It does take a little while to cook gumbo, so there's a lot to do, so I'm going to get started right away. Uh, first thing, just to let you know what we got going on. I got my good old black iron pot. You want a heavy bottom pot, uh, and I have one cup of oil that I've turned on and I've already gotten really hot. That's important. We're going to make a roux. Now, I can do just a cooking demo of roux and talk about cooking roux for about 15 minutes or so. Um, just the roux, because that is, to me, the, it's your foundation that you're going to build this gumbo house on, is your roux. Uh, so there's a lot to talk about, so I want to go ahead and get started. I got, roux is always equal parts, oil to flour, so just to catch everybody up, one cup of oil in the pot, turned up nice and hot, now I want it hot, I see the oil starting to smoke, that's what I'm looking for. And I got one cup of flour, actually a little bit extra. Now, a couple things, the first thing, I like to do deep dives on things, explain every choice that we make. The first thing I do when I make roux, I always start off with roux with a whisk. I never use a spoon. I switch to a spoon after the roux's done, but I never make my roux with a whisk. Why? That, why? Safety. Because when you're, you're stirring with a spoon, this is what we call Cajun napalm. It's going to be hot. It's going to be 350 degrees. So when you're stirring with a spoon, you have more chance of it to splash on the side. Whisk, you're not, if you whisk through, you're not going to have that splash. So I'm going to go ahead. I want you to notice something. Right here, I'm going to get my flour into the hot oil. You're going to see a lot of steam come off. Here we go. Look at all this steam that comes off. I'm going to start whisking that in. Whenever you first add your flour to your hot oil, you're going to get that steam instantly come out. The reason for that is, is because flour itself is hydroscopic, meaning it absorbs moisture. So if you live in Louisiana, where we have tons of humidity, your flour is literally going to absorb some of that moisture and humidity that's in the air. So I always want you to be real careful whenever you throw that flour directly in, have your whisk ready, again, so not splashing, and then go ahead and get start, start whisking, and then just be careful. Right when you throw that flour in, you're going to get a little steam right away. So just be careful because I've had many a times where the steam has actually kind of burnt my hand because you may not realize it if you don't know, but steam has the potential to burn twice as much as boiling water. So steam can burn you worse than boiling water. So be careful of that. And then now it's just all about whisking away. You kind of want to whisk constantly as we cook. Now one thing I do want to show you, as we go through the cooking process, because I know the camera isn't super close, but I want you to see all the way, we're trying to make a beautiful dark room. I'm a big fan of a rich dark room. So when we first put it in, we're first, right now we're at the blonde stage. I want everybody to see that. We have it's almost the room is about the same color as this wooden spoon. So we're just getting started. So we're at the blonde stage. So what we're looking to do is really cook it to get to dark, which is going to be about the color of peanut butter. Uh, and then back to building this foundation for our gumbo. I love, to me, in my opinion, and of course we're going to talk about some variations shortly. I love, for me, for my money, I like a nice, slightly thicker, rich gumbo. I don't like it when my gumbo is too thin. I like to be able to put the rice on top and it kind of floats. Um, but I like having that nice, rich color. Well, one thing that I want to tell you all about is we're eventually going to add our onion, celery, and bell pepper in here. But one thing that also uh, contributes to your, the color of your roux actually is actually, believe it or not, going to come from your onions. Whenever we get the roux to the certain color we want, it's actually going to get darker when we add the onions. Well, why is that, you say? Well, it's because onions themselves actually have a high sugar content in the actual vegetable itself. So whenever it hits that hot, hot roux, 
the sugar inside that onion will caramelize, meaning the sugars will turn into a caramel and, and turn brown naturally. Then that color from the onions will actually affect the color of your gumbo and your roux, actually making it go up a step or a shade darker than what you already have. Now again, what we're doing here is this process, now we're just making a small roux. Some roux, if you make a big batch roux, you're making a big pot of gumbo. So that it could sometimes take as long as 30 minutes of just making that roux. Here we're actually starting to get a little color. Just to update you on the color, we were the color of the spoon. Now I want to show you, we're a little bit darker now. So it's, it's gone up a bit, and if you were here, it's starting to get that toasty, popcorn-y kind of smell in here in, in the kitchen, the old kitchen here, and we're just cooking away. Now as, as I start to whisk, and again, we want to constantly be whisking. If I were to just leave it alone and not whisk, you might get, it's very easy for that flour to burn on this hot pan because we're on high heat. And if all of a sudden when you add a liquid and you see these little specks of black, you're going to notice that you probably didn't whisk your roux enough, and unfortunately, you scorched your roux or, or uh, you burnt your roux, and then that's going to impart that flavor into your gumbo, and that's the last thing you want because once you scorch the roux, there's not much you can do, you got to start over. You don't want that. So constantly whisking. Now as this kind of starts to come up, or actually should be in a minute or two, we're going to be there. So as I just sit there and whisk, I want to remind everybody of a few things uh, with these demos and the goings on over here at beautiful Homeless House. Uh, first of all, do me a favor. If you love our cooking videos, don't go in our most requested video. It would be a great personal favor for me if you hit the share button. It's right there. Just give it a little click and share it to all your friends because we would love this to be one of our most viewed videos we've ever had because it's been one of our most requested videos. And also remember, my friend Jesse's behind the camera. So at any point, you have any questions about anything we're doing, don't feel afraid to drop a comment if you're watching live. And we would love to interact with you and respond live on the air. Also, it can be anything. Every now and then, thankfully for us, you know, I'm pretty good at cooking, but audio visual production, we're still learning. So every now and then, we'll have um, we'll have audio issues where we where, where we hear people will say, hey, we can't hear you. Let us know how we're doing. Love hearing from you guys. Now, just in that little bit of short time, when the roux starts to change, it starts to train pretty doggone quickly. So we went from, I want to show y'all now, that we've gone just from being that lighter color, starting to color, that now we're all ready because I'm cooking on high heat. Look at that. We're all ready, again, using the spoon as comparison. We started out, it was the color of this spoon. Now we've got to that peanut butter color. And when that happens too, another sign we'll see is the flour starts to get a little more grayer and chunky. So this is the point. Again, I was using my whisk to stir because this is about 350 degrees here. If I were to use a spoon, you don't want this to spill on you because it will burn you. We call it Cajun napalm. So now we're at the point where the roux is nice and brown. I switched to my spoon and I'm going to add, I just, I love showing uh, different alternatives. This is pre-chopped onion, celery, and bell pepper. Jessie's waving her hand. I guess we got our first question. What, what we got, Jess? Annie says she came in late. Wants to know what your heat setting should be on to do the roux. Okay, so I am cooking on high. I have this bad boy cranked up all the way. And that's just really how I roll. Uh, I want, you know, you don't necessarily have to do that. You can at least minimum do a medium high. However, to me, a, I want to just get this cooked fast because we're cooking here on demo. But just your, what's going to happen is as you make your roux, you're trying to achieve that 350 degrees temperature. And because there's liquid or, or there's moisture in your flour, if you just cook on a lower temperature, that's absolutely fine. It's just going to take longer for your roux to brown. So if you want it to go fast and you're whisking all the way, crank it up to high like I've just done. And and your room will cook pretty fast. I look, I don't know how long we've been going. We've been going for about six or seven minutes. But my room here with just this is a small batch of room, one cup flour, one cup of oil. It cooked, it only took about it only took about eight minutes or so. However, when you make a larger batch of batch of room, it takes a little bit longer. Now when I come back, I added my onion, celery, bell pepper. I'm also now gonna add that in first. Next I'm gonna add my garlic. And man, I, this is where I wish smell vision was invented because it has just like, this is when I think of just the smell of roux, this is what that is. Now I want to circle back around to, you know, to me, you know, the good gumbo always starts with that foundation of the good roux, and I like a nice dark roux. You don't have to take yours as dark, but whenever I, last time when I showed you the color of the roux, it had that nice peanut butter color, and remember how I said, actually when you add your onion, celery, bell pepper, because of the high sugar content of the onions, it's going to caramelize and 
turn your root even darker. Well, here, let me show you. We went from that peanut butter color to now that's what I think of when we have a nice dark root. Look how dark that is. So when we started off, we were this color, the same color of the spoon. Now we have that nice, dark, rich color. Jesse, another question. Man, love me, guys. What you got, Jess? Nicola wants to know what's the best type of oil to use. Best type of oil. Man, that's a great question. I'm glad you said that. We're using salad oil or canola oil, and that's important. Now, roux is a classic thing in cooking, including your classic basic French roux is equal parts of butter to, to, um, to flour, but you, that wouldn't work for this because butter or, say, olive oil, the reason you don't use those other types of oils or fats is because they have a low smoke point, meaning it, you, this is cooked at very high temperature. So if you use butter or, or olive oil, the, the oil will actually burn before the, the flour toasts to this dark color. So you use an oil like peanut oil or salad oil or canola oil, it can reach a higher smoke point, and that's the oil you want to use. Now, we've got that beautiful, beautiful, dark, chocolate-looking roux. So the next thing we want to do is i got some seafood stock here, and I'm just going to start labeling it in. Again, I like to switch back and forth. You can use a spoon here, but now I'm going to switch back to my handy-dandy whisk and start to whisk this stock into the roux itself. And just kind of, I like to, what I like to do is, again, our recipes are a guide. So, so you don't have to even, so when you're doing this, you don't have to even worry about measuring. I'm not putting, the, the, I think the uh, recipe calls for three quarts of stock, but I'm just adding stock to the point where I get the gumbo, the thickness that I want. And then just on a pro tip is, once I get to that point, I add a little bit more. Why do I add a little bit more? It's because this is going to cook for an hour or so, and as it cooks, look what we see here, steam, meaning water is evaporating and reducing, so it's going to naturally get a little thicker as it cooks down a little bit. So I add a ladle, add a ladle, whisk it in, add a ladle, whisk it in, until it achieves the, the thickness I want. Now, I'm still cooking on a high heat. Yes, just to make sure I'm not alive. And the reason for that is because... What we want to do is roux, anytime you're working with roux, it doesn't reach its true thickening potential until it comes to a boil, meaning your liquid won't thicken until it boils. So we need this to come to a boil, and then at that point, once it boils, we're going to turn our heat down to a cell. So maybe one or two more ladles of this stock in here, and we're going to whisk that in. Now, if you were to just taste this right now, you're going, it's going to have a really, really strong, overpowering roux flavor. And that's because roux needs to kind of cook and marry with all, all the, all the uh, flavors that are going on in here, which takes about an hour or so. so. So this isn't something that can just be whipped up real quick. We need that to cook down. But now that I'm at the point where I have the roux done and I have the stock in, this is our base for gumbo. Let me see if I can catch a little ladle right here just to show you what we're looking at. We have that beautiful, rich-looking gumbo flavor. But now what we want to do is start adding some ingredients to it. Now one thing I love about the demos we have here is there's a whole thread going on from the picture that we posted because I'm making seafood and okra gumbo and there's sausage in it. And yes, I'm about to add some Andouille sausage, which is our smoked um, ham style sausage of Louisiana. If you don't have Andouille, a great substitute that you can find pretty much anywhere to good smoked sausage. I actually, I actually, if you'll see, I dice up my sausage a little bit more, I have hearty chunks. That's what I like. If you like big, thick chunks, we'll go ahead and slice it that way. But uh, we had some comments in our post saying, well, now it's not seafood gumbo if you add meat to it. And I guess that's true. And I know a lot of people like to make seafood gumbo during Lent season. And that's that's great. If you don't want meat in your gumbo, fine. Just don't add it to it. No problem. But the reason why I like adding smoked sausage to our gumbo is because you're going to get great flavor. It's going to naturally put in that great flavor to me. When I think of gumbo, it just means throw everything in the pot. So you're going to get great flavor. Not only that, but I like the smokiness that you get from it as well. If you find it's too overpowering for the seafood, no problem. Don't put it in. I'm going to come to your house. No police are going to come to your house. Next thing I'm adding is some okra. I love okra in my seafood gumbo. Again, some people are different. I know people say, ooh, I don't put okra in my seafood gumbo, but I put it in my chicken gumbo. Hey, whatever you like, that's great. But I just love okra in my seafood gumbo. Now what we're going to do is, I have these are the seafoods I'm going to be using, and I want to show you real quick. I, want, I have some oysters, which still have some juice in it. That's important. 
I have some grape shrimp, and I have some jumbo lump crab. Now what I want to do is, if, right now I want this to simmer for about an hour, but I want it to have that great flavor. So what I do is I like to say, make a sacrifice. Meaning, because if you're cooking chicken gumbo, just throw that in right now, let it go, no problem. Because that's just going to get great and kind of shred up as it just cooks, cooks, cooks. But seafood's delicate, it can overcook. However, it has great natural flavor. So we want to get some of that flavor in our gravy or our gumbo. So I'm going to add just a little bit of shrimp, a little bit of this crab. If you have claw crab at this point, that's great because claw crab has great crab, great crab flavor. And I'm going to add just a little bit of oysters and I'm going to pour a lot of that juice that's in there. And that's going to give you a couple of oysters and a lot of that juice in there. And that's just me making a sacrifice. That gumbo, though, that seafood we put in is going to overcook, but we're going to impart some of that flavor into the gumbo, which is important. Now, again, what we would do is we would let this cook for about an hour, and then, then what we get to the final stages. So, for the magic of television, I'm just going to move this to the side. I have one that I started right over here. Let's get this bad boy on. Stove top, take the lid off, and let me show you what we're working here. As it started to cook, as it started to cook, a couple things have happened. That okra, you'll notice the, the okra itself, which I like, is has kind of broken down. You know, a lot of times people worry about okra, it kind of has that slime, which is just the protein that comes off the okra as it cooks. Well, as you start to cook it, that will go away. And the okra kind of, you can still see little bits of okra in here, but it kind of breaks down and it all just kind of stews down and becomes beautiful and it all kind of melds together. Um, now we're going to let this come up to a simmer. And then what I would suggest doing is right then now you're at a point where now we're just ready to season it and add our seafood to it. So first let's start by adding our seafood. We're going to go in with, again, you want to do this just maybe 10 or 15 minutes before you would serve it because you don't want to overcook your seafood. So I'm going to get that crab in there, I'm going to get these oysters in here, and I'm going to get these shrimp in here. And they're just going to kind of poach right here in that beautiful gumbo gravy. So just kind of whisk that in. This is the point too where I come back and I add a little bit of my parsley or my sliced green onions. I happen to have a little parsley here. That's going to go in. That goes in and now we want to season it. Again, this is, this is up to you how you want to season it. This is what I season with. I have some kosher salt. I always like using kosher salt because I can really feel how I'm seasoning in there. I'm going to get a little salt in there. I got some black pepper. Then just a little bit of black pepper. I like adding a little bit of granulated garlic. Now, uh, there's, you, you normally find this in the store in two forms. Gar granulated garlic or garlic powder. I always personally prefer granulated garlic because the powder itself is a little chalky. And sometimes I find that's a little more bitter. Just a personal preference, but just something I think about. So I like the granulated garlic. It gives it that nice garlic flavor. Again, do you like a spicy gumbo? I always say I'm a whip when it comes to spicy food, but I'm still from Louisiana. I do like well-seasoned food, and I don't mind a little bit of a kick. So I'm just going to put just a small shake of some cayenne pepper in here. Just kind of let all this come together. And then again, I'm not doing it because we're just doing a little cooking demo here, but what you want to do is anytime... You're seasoning your food, uh, soups, or anything you season, especially soups. You always want to season a little taste, season a little taste. One method I like to do is I use the two spoon method that we did in culinary school. It's where I have my dipper and my taster, so I'm not cross-contaminating, but I'm not in your home. You do what you want to do. Uh, but I take one. This is my dipper. I dip this in here. I can then bring it over to my tasting spoon. Taste that. Now I'm not reusing the same spoon over and over. And I can see already, man, it really has a great flavor. So that's really good. Now I can adjust my seasoning. I like to add salt until I kind of taste the salt, where, where I get that hint of salt, and then I stop. And then same thing with heat. I like to add to it. I add my cayenne pepper, and as soon as I get a little heat, um, then I'll stop. I'm going to go ahead. Up to you. You can serve this on the side, or go ahead and put a couple dashes of a little good hot sauce. But other than that, guys, we are good to go. So let's go to the plate, or the bowl in this case. It's a better bowl here. Of course, we're going to serve that with some rice. Now, you just now what, what I like to do is I like to look at my seafood. When I just see those oysters that start to curl, I know that it's ready, and I see the shrimp start to turn a little pink. I know that my, my seafood's cooked, and we are ready to go. So let's get a couple ladles of this in. Again, we made seafood and oyster gumbo. What is your favorite gumbo? Do you like sausage in your gumbo or 
and your seafood gumbo, or do you feel that once you add sausage to a seafood gumbo, well, it ain't seafood gumbo no more. Let me know what you think, guys. Other than that, I'm going to put some rice right here that we're going to serve it with, and happy gumbo season. We finally made it to that great gumbo weather, my favorite time of the year. Thank you, guys. We'll see y'all next week.